To begin this presentation, we're going to have to go back to a time when there were only 27,000 electric refrigerators, a time when the comedy team of Laurel and Hardy had yet to be created, and a time when Yankee Stadium first opened its doors. It was a time known as the Jazz Age, with a dance craze known as the Charleston. The year? 1923. And the place? Well, follow me. This is Oakland County's highest natural hill, a hill that was once known as Heaven Hill. And while many say it acquired its name because the hill seems to reach to the heavens, others say it's because of its heavenly natural beauty. But whatever you believe, one thing is for sure. When you reach the top of this hill, you will feel a million miles away. And that may very well have been the sentiment of a 29-year-old man named Edsel Bryant Ford. As the president of the Ford Motor Company, and the son of the man who put America on wheels, Edsel began purchasing parcels of land surrounding Heaven Hill in 1923. His goal was to create a more local getaway, as opposed to a lengthy drive up north from Down River. And that's when one of the E's from Heaven Hill was dropped, making it what we now know today as simply Haven Hill. Now if you know anything about the Ford family, you know that Edsel grew up with a passion and an appreciation for art, from drawings to photography, and that probably had a lot to do with his selection of friends, as they too enjoyed personal challenges, like architect Robert O'Derrick, who was hired by Edsel to design the Haven Hill Lodge, the groundbreaking of which took place in 1924. At a grand total of 6,900 square feet, the Haven Hill Lodge was occupied by Edsel and his wife Eleanor, and their four children, Henry II, Benson, Josephine, and William Clay Ford. Serving as the Ford family home until the completion of their Gross Point residence, the lodge consisted of six primary bedrooms and was constructed of cedar logs from the Ford timber holdings. It was complemented by six Vermont stone fireplaces and two verandas at opposite corners of the lodge one that overlooked the surrounding rolling hills for as far as the eye could see, while the other overlooked the 69-acre man-made Haven Hill Lake, which was created for Edsel by damming off Haven Hill's Cedar Creek. And within a stone throw of the lodge was another structure, known as the carriage house. Using the same cedar logs and Vermont stone as the lodge, the carriage house was designed as a three-car garage for the Model T's while offering a living quarters for the chauffeur. But the top of Haven Hill itself was only the beginning of what would soon become a 2,422-acre estate, an estate that was entered through a gatehouse just off of Highland Road. As you drove through the estate, the first building you encountered was the riding stable, which housed the family's prized riding horses. It was here that you also found the elaborate vegetable gardens, which played a large role in the self-sufficient estate. And then behind the riding stable was the pasture that included an oval riding track for the horses. And just around the bend, and a little too big to miss, was this enormous barn. Known as a double monitor, this 15,000 square foot barn initially housed 1,500 sheep, which were later replaced with horses and black Angus cattle. The Ford family went on to enjoy the estate for 20 years, but in 1943, Edsel passed away at the young age of 49. Understandably, life at Haven Hill was never quite the same. Three years later, Eleanor sold the entire $1.8 million estate to our state park system for $310,000, which even included the toboggans from the 3,000-foot toboggan run. Since then, Haven Hill has had its share of not-so-pleasant changes, beginning with the riding stable, which was destroyed by fire. But it was January of 1999 
that the estate suffered its most heartfelt loss as the Haven Hill Lodge met the very same fate, this time due to arson. But when buildings remain uncared for, fire is not the only concern to contend with, as Mother Nature will surely take her toll as well. So while you can still envision classic cars rolling through the gatehouse entrance, for example, it is certainly not what it was in its heyday, which brings us back to the barn. Because the barn had begun to collapse, a rescue effort was formed under the name Friends of Highland Recreation Area, but due to its deteriorated condition, the barn was simply no longer a match against the high winds of Mother Nature. Yeah, it's pretty sad. And right about now, you may be thinking that the Haven Hill story has finally shrunk to nothing more than a paragraph in a local paper. But that just isn't so. The goal for the barn, for example, was to convert it into an event space, a multi-use facility for educational and recreational activities and events. Well, the collapse actually expedites that goal, as opposed to renovating the previous 15,000 square feet. And by recycling many of the fallen materials, renovation costs to bring the plan to fruition are much more within reach, all of which might look something like this. And of course operating expenses will be dramatically lower as well, particularly during Michigan's cold winter months. But what can you do with only 25% of the original barn? Well, speaking of Michigan's cold winter months, we could take one of the rooms, uh, like this one here, and convert it into a warming room for cross-country ski. Maybe with ski rentals and trail maps and everything else you need, and staffed by a couple of volunteers. A warming area would also be a great complement for the neighboring Toboggan Hill. And to take things a step further, how about some music as you coast around the Pavilion Ice Rink? An ice rink that could even include hockey training for kids. And as the Boy Scouts have already discovered, the Pavilion area is also ideal for snow snake races. Or if nothing else, you could simply enjoy a marshmallow topped hot chocolate maybe in front of a Vermont stone fireplace, courtesy of the former Haven Hill Lodge. During the warmer and kinder months, the barn might be a bit more active serving as the hub in Oakland County's upcoming trail initiative, linking several parks and trail systems together while providing mentoring and lecture programs that could range from environmental to kayaking, and by user groups ranging from equestrian to scouts. Eventually, you may even find a room dedicated to monthly exhibits that are in one way or another related to Haven Hill and the outdoors and created by students. So in short, plans for the barn are far from over. In fact, that pavilion roof you see on the back, well that will be constructed in a manner that will allow the barn to be rebuilt later, expanding as needed through its own self-supporting means. And then, there's Admiral Byrd who in 1926 was the first person to fly over the North Pole. Three years later, he sealed his legendary status by being the first person to fly over the South Pole. Well, that's interesting, but what does that have to do with Haven Hill? Well, his North Pole flight was in a plane he named after Edsel Milner Ford's daughter, Josephine, while his South Pole flight was in a plane donated by Edsel. And that's where the Haven Hill Carriage House comes in. Located at the top of Haven Hill, the carriage house is a perfect representation of life on Haven Hill, a life that included legendary Haven Hill visitors, like Admiral Byrd. And Thomas Edison, who with over 1,000 patents, gave us everything from light bulbs to movie theaters. And Charles Lindbergh, who was the first person to fly solo across the Atlantic Ocean. Like Edsel, who created the Mercury and Continental automobiles, Haven Hill's visitors not only made headlines, they made history. And let's not forget the legendary names who designed the estate, like master landscape planner Jens Jensen, studied in universities around the globe and hailed by the New York Times as the Dean of Landscape Architecture. As role models, the carriage house would allow you to stand right where they stood, while learning a bit about their history, along with the Haven Hill and Ford family history. But that's not all a carriage house could offer. Imagine tours and field trips that begin with a projected presentation inside the carriage house. Guided hiking tours that would include all of the estate's hillside attractions too, such as the pool and toboggan run. And maybe the final stop would be the site of the former Haven Hill Lodge. Or for those who would prefer to hike at their own pace, we could even have downloadable MP3 tours developed by students. 
Oh, and those lodge displays? They could be developed by students too, redesigned on a seasonal basis. Speaking of seasons, we have yet to talk about Haven Hill's natural history and the fact that a portion of Haven Hill is a dedicated national natural landmark and a recipient of the American Society of Landscape Architects Medallion Award. But being Oakland County's highest natural hill, well that story might best begin from the Carriage House Observation Deck with the help of visual aids and former park volunteers who have already offered to teach Haven Hill's natural history all over again. And these visual aids could be constructed by students too, not to mention a trades program helping to construct the deck itself. In the end, the carriage house could become the Haven Hill Heritage House. And by the way, most of the work needed here is cosmetic. Now let's look at everything from another perspective. Haven Hill is one of those rare historic attractions that is literally a day in the park. But what if it was more than that? What if it was a recreation park, offering everything from therapeutic relaxation to physical fitness? Well, it already is. You can already swim here, you can camp here, you can picnic here, you can fish in two different lakes, and there are miles of serene horseback riding, hiking, and mountain biking trails, with plenty of parking for everything from horse trailers to tour buses. And the scenery? Well, within seconds of entering the park, you'll know why Edsel called this his nerve retreat. And everything you see is just as enjoyable from a distance as it is close up. Truly, having recreation added to the experience makes for a more memorable and entertaining way to take in an historic site. And that's why FORA is working with the local business community to create family getaway packages and other tourism concepts. In short, a visit that includes activities like fishing and horseback riding would be a very unique option for the international draw of Michigan's automotive history. And because the Ford family enjoyed the very same outdoor activities, there may even be ways to tie that in with the experience as well, like maybe a little vagabond camping. So in summary, no, Haven Hill has not shrunk to a mere paragraph. There is still a story to see and experience, a story that is still being enjoyed by all ages. And for that matter, it's a story that has really only been told in local circles, so it hasn't even begun to take off yet. And the story itself, well, that's only the foundation of the possibilities. But we can only do it if we all pull together for a Haven Hill makeover, because we're running out of time at a time when we've already begun to experience the alternative, and at a time when our local and state economies could benefit from it, and our kids and their schools, and our property values, and on and on. We have so much to gain by saving it, and too much to lose if we don't. Saving an existing building is definitely worth any effort in the world. Actually, to me, it, the benefits are for everybody in the community and for all the folks that live around the area and even throughout the state. The plans that everyone has voiced and the coming together of the people for this barn is important. It's a real community thing. I think we've had probably what, uh, about 65 people that came out today, um, which was a, a great effort of just community help of, uh, of people coming out to be able to save this uh, building. The historical benefit to keep this barn alive for multifunction use is really critical. I think it'd be awesome uh, for the kids to be able to this come whole and see For kids and field trips, they can learn the history and the real perspective of the way it you know, was. And at the very least, wouldn't it be great if we all had something this unique that we could all enjoy so close to home? So please, as we ask for your participation, remember that this is not for some private interest. It's for all of us to benefit from. You, your kids, your neighbors, everyone. And let's face it, Haven Hill has been neglected for far too long. Let's do something about this lost treasure once and for all. Let's all become friends of Highland Recreation Area today. Thank you.